Back in 1999, BMW revealed the very first SAV called the X5, a raised up kind of utility thing that looked like a 5 series wagon and also almost handled like one. Four generations later, this is the brand new 2019 BMW X5 in its V8 variant, the X-Drive 50i. For now, you can pick between this one and the six-cylinder X-Drive 40i, which makes a bit less power but returns better mileage. The powerhouse under this hood is the V8 N63 series motor with 4.4 liters of displacement and two twin scroll turbos and it makes 456 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. That is quite a step up from the X-Drive 40i with a 335 horsepower and 330 pound-feet of torque. And you know what? When you have a vehicle that weighs 2.4 tons, that difference kind of matters. This V8 is the N63 B44 M3 engine, which is the technical update number 3. It features improved thermal shielding for the crankcase and the cylinder head. It has a new ignition system and higher pressure injectors. It has a redesigned intake manifold and an upstream cooling radiator. And of course, following the latest engine design trends, the turbos have been placed inside the V. The X-Drive all-wheel drive system is, as usual, one of the best on the market. And the 8-speed Steptronic ZF-sourced automatic gearbox is quick and very smooth 99% of the time. The car has many driving modes and two individual modes to choose from. For a set it and forget it kind of mode, you can use adaptive, which is clever enough to adjust the car for the occasion. The car we're driving today is equipped with all the bells and whistles and it has the two axle air suspension. And let me tell you, that makes this thing ride and drive like a dream. It has really imposing road presence, especially from the driver's seat. It really makes you feel like a boss. Potholes and other various road imperfections barely shake up the cabin. And let me tell you, the soundproofing is so good that the interior is almost fully isolated from exterior rumble. On the highway, it literally swallows mile after mile. But when the road gets twisty, it feels like it's kind of smirking and it's inviting you to put it in sport mode. The body does roll, but it's just enough to communicate its excellent dynamics and warn the driver of upcoming limits. When pushed really hard, it remains very neutral and will go into a four-wheel drift. So under all circumstances, it remains very easy to control and most importantly, fun. So it's definitely worth its BMW badge and its ultimate driving machine slogan. But the really cool features don't stop here. As a matter of fact, we're just getting started. Inside is where the biggest changes are found. The interior quality is just off the charts, as the materials used are AAA and fit and finish is awesome. If you try really hard to look for imperfections, you'll find that there's a little sharp corner up here that could potentially get caught on your jacket, and the window frame little plastic thing here doesn't 100% fit against the leather but you know what that's it and that's crazy nitpicking for both of them oh and also it's quite easy to make your pants dirty as the side skirts stick out quite a bit and once again in a BMW the headrests are hard and hollow and can sound like bongos in case of a crash though I'd really not want my face to land on here this car has almost every option ticked off so it's a hefty 102,000 Canadian dollars or what would be 89,730 US dollars in the States. Prices start in Canada at $71,500 and in the US at $60,700 and that's for the X-Drive 40i. For the X-Drive 50i, it's 86,000 Canadian dollars or 75,750 US dollars. <laughs> One thing that immediately stands out is this crystal gear lever, the crystal topping on the iDrive knob, and the crystal thing here on the volume knob. 
looks very poshy. There's a nice color little LCD screen for the temperature of the climate control. The window motors are so smooth. And in the front seats, you can set your heating and your cooling concurrently. So you can warm up your butt and you can ventilate it at the same time so it doesn't smell like stinky ass. The cup holders can warm up or keep your drinks cool and the wireless charging tray will keep your phone topped up. However, there's a little small problem with this whole cell phone thing. You see, the car supports Apple CarPlay and not Android Auto. But then, I have an iPhone 6 that doesn't support wireless charging, so I'd like to plug my phone in. But there's USB-C plugs everywhere. I mean, my kids have iPads. In the back, they're USB-C plugs. We don't have such a thing for iPads. Luckily, there's a single USB-A plug in the front, but that's it, just one. The latest version of the iDrive looks really sharp, and on that massive screen, it looks amazing. And even though it got a little bit more complicated over the years, it's still one of the best infotainment systems to use. You can also use the BMW Connected app to control various features of your car and view information about it, like how much gas you have left, or what's the status of your locks or your windows. You can also precondition your car. However, this is not my car. This is connected to somebody else's X5. So let's, uh, let's have some fun. Special mention to these amazing laser lights as they're able to shed light very evenly and apparently much farther than the LED ones can. The ambient light inside can be customized to multiple colors and it really makes the interior look great, like kind of like a party wagon, it's really cool. Roominess is good but not as good as it could be for the size of the car. Obviously, up front here, I have a lot of room. I mean, I feel like a king. I forgot to tell you that also the armrests on both the door and the center console are heated together with the seat. So up front, it's a really nice and cozy place to be. However, in the back seats, it's not that it's not roomy. You do get plenty of headroom and legroom, but it could be roomier. You can also get an optional third row of seats, which is basically not very recommended because it's kind of tiny, not very usable. So if you want seven seats and a BMW, there's an X7 now. The air suspension is pretty clever on this car. When you go off-roading, you can raise it up by 40 millimeters extra from where it regularly rides. When you go, oops, sorry, gesture control. Yeah, did we talk about gesture control? We have gesture control. Ding, next. Anyway, so the suspension, you can jack it up 40 millimeters or when you exceed a certain speed, I think 138 kilometers an hour, which is totally illegal in Canada, but also when you put it in Sport Plus mode, um, the car will lower itself by 20 millimeters, which is really cool. Now with this V8 motor, gas mileage is a little bit tricky. When I was initially driving it in the city, 100%, but kind of enjoying the power and everything, I really quickly found myself doing like 20, 20.5, 21, and then I was like, oh, okay. So I switched the car to Eco Pro. I, I was still city. I was able to lower it to about 14.5-ish. Then when I hit the highway and I was still behaving myself, I lowered it to about 12. So as far as mileage is concerned, it really depends on your style of driving and where you're gonna be driving. So if you're gonna be doing a lot of city and you have a heavy foot, expect some pretty bad numbers. All in all, the new X5 is better than the previous X5 that was better than the previous X5 that was better than the previous X5. And the initial X5 was pretty awesome. So as you can imagine, this thing totally rocks. It's a fantastic family hauler. It's a fantastic executive commuter. It does everything good and apparently it's quite capable off-road, especially if you equip it with the off-road package that also gets you a limited slip differential in the back. This X5 is a very rewarding vehicle that makes you feel good no matter what mood you're in. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it an overall score of nine out of 10, because this thing is excellent. Perfect.